you can always guarantee some cute pussy in one of my videos, can't you? Junior. All right, so Roglic has won the Tour of Spain, the Velta Spania. What does this mean for brands like Cervelo? Um, it means that they're going to sell more bikes, and that's the name of the game. So these rim brake ones, this is an R3, really nice frame, made in China, all Cervelos made in China, uh, and then most uh, bike, bike companies these days, big ones, they ship to Taiwan, ship the frames to Taiwan for painting and, and polishing and finish, made in Taiwan, so that's tariffs and taxes. Anyway, what does this mean? <clears throat> for It means for the b people who like rim brake bikes, like myself and a lot of my audience, these things are going for peanuts at the moment. Uh, and they soon will go, the price will drop it down even more because people want to associate with, you know, in cycling, it's super, super finicky. Uh, people in the marketing area, people want to associate with the latest stuff, all right? The latest and greatest. So the latest and greatest right now is rim, uh, disc brakes. It's not rim brakes, all right? You got uh, Roglic holding up his Cervelo R5, his Cervelo R5 gravel bike. And uh, <laughs> it's amazing, you know, 25 mil tires. So he is the officially, officially the first ever to win a world tour, a grand tour, sorry, a world tour rider, oh, no, a rider to win a grand tour 100% with disc brakes. Crazy, isn't it? Primo Roglic put the nail in the coffin of rim brakes largely. Now we'll go back to the Tour de France, so go back to the future, 2022. If one of the team Skyriders, Ineos, can win with rim brakes, then we can sort of have a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a ceremony there. But pretty much now, it's disc brakes just putting the nail in that rim brake coffin. As we mentioned many times before, the pros hate the disc brakes, but they don't have any choice. And Primo is a relatively new cyclist, new sort of rider. He's not like Valverde or Van or, you know, some of these seasoned riders, Chris Froome. Uh, been out there for even vegan banal. They've been around for a bit. He's relatively new to the scene, fresh off the the ski slopes, and um, you know, doing really really well. You know, and uh, so he's just he's adapted quite well to disc brakes. Someone like Peter Sagan, who's had all these victories, most of his victories on rim brakes. It's just psychologically, it's neurohormonally, to jump on a gravel bike with and put 25 more tires on it and then go and win. It's like, it's possible, but it's just mentally like, oh, I hate this. And guys like Peter Sagan, they hate being told what to do. You know, guys like Chris Froome hate being told what to do. So for them to go to an inferior product, mentally, it's just like, same, same with me. I hate being told what to do if it's the wrong way. You know, if it's the right way, I'm like, yeah, great. But if it's the wrong way, I'm just like, it cracks me. So there's an aspect as riders we talk about, Valverde as well. Um, he's you know, a bit defiant in that he can sort of overcome that. And unfortunately, he crashed out. It would have been great to have him uh, still at the end. Lopez had a bit of a meltdown. And again, it's just, this is, you know, not normal uh, human physiological, what's the word that I'm looking at? Limits, you know. You need to take certain things to ensure your mental and physical health at that level. You're right. It's just, it's, I mean, you can, you can, you know, you can do that many Ks. You can... I've done more Ks than that in three weeks, you know, it's not it's not an issue, but it's the, the wattages and the constant focus you've got to have and the, the, you know, this smashing of descents and it's on, off, on, off, it's just a constant focus and just like unpredictability, you get a flat, you've got to chase back on that, that anxiety, that constant anxiety, if I get a puncture now, you know, it's going to take me so long to get back because I've got to do a whole bike change and have the power drill in the front, you know, like it's just, I can't see a teammate's wheel or a Mavic service wheel really quick, it's just that anxiety so guys like Lopez just cracking there you know missing his podium Hague stepping up missing the brake is what it is it's racing it's bike racing you know sometimes you the hammer sometimes you the nail um, Jack Hague had the breakthrough just like I predicted in July I said Jack Hague's definitely a contender he just has that physiological numbers right now um, and uh, yes it's Bahrain Merida you know, they're doing really good as well. You know, so it's got, they've got a lot of strong teams now. You know, you've got Ineos, you've got, you know, Rabobank, a.k.a. JV. You've got Movistar, um, and you've got Bahrain Merida, you know, and UAE. So it's like, the racing's really, I'd say, the highest level ever. I'd say the, the racing's harder now than back in the 2000s. 
I definitely would say that. The level of competition, it's, you know, anyone can win now almost. Well, not anyone, but you know what I'm saying. It's a large pool of riders can win the race versus back in the day. It was just, you know, it was Decker, it was Lance, it was Museo, you know. But now it's like, it's crazy. Uh, so the level's definitely higher. Um, there's f much, much uh, fitter riders now. The the top riders, the riders are faster. They're doing six watts per kilo, six and a half watts per kilo with minimal exertion in their faces, you know, like compared to Lance and Balocchi and those guys would like, blown out the face. These guys today, like mouth semi open, not much facial expression, just stonewall tapping it out. You, you can't even really tell if they're doing 400 watts or 250 watts because the face looks the same. But back in the day with Lance, you could tell when he was going full gas because he couldn't hide it on the face. So the stuff, the the things that are out there today, much better uh, quality. Hopefully, longevity of the rider, the swimmer, the runner, health-wise, in 10 years, 20 years' time, hopefully it's okay. But right now, the performances are in athletics, cycling, swimming, whoosh, blasting up. That's the deal. Anyway, that's the recap. Roglic wins again. Volta, I think Harass has won the Volta three times, and um, who else has won the Velta three times? I'm forgetting, I've been mental blank here. But Roglic has joined the club. I think it's only four or so riders have done that. And um, but yeah, that's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Anyway, see you on the road. Bin breaks, man. If you want bin break stuff, don't buy just yet. Just wait a little bit longer. Prices are dropping right off.